So right here behind me, absolutely iconic of the Sonoran Desert is of course the saguaro cactus. And we've got a couple of cacti um, growing right behind me as you can see. There's actually two, one of them um, got damaged a little bit right just there. And so it decided to grow two new stems. All right, so saguaro cacti, like all cacti, are very uniquely adapted to a very hot, dry climate. And so we'll have a look at the adaptations that apply to saguaros, and many of these apply to all cacti. So first, they are known as stem succulents. That means that they store water in their stems. And by storing water, when there's no water available elsewhere, then they can use that stored water as a source of water for photosynthesis and um, all the other processes that plants use water for. The next one is cacti don't have leaves, or at least when the leaves um, are first flushed, they're very small and um, they're virtually nondescript and they, they, they fall off very quickly, leaving one part behind, and that's the petiole and the midrib of the leaf, and that becomes the spine of the cactus. So the spines on cacti are modified leaves, and by eliminating leaves, then they eliminate all of the water loss that would occur through the leaves as well. So the next adaptation is that they have shallow spreading roots. In fact, I'm probably standing on the roots of this saguaro. So they spread out from the plant in about the top, I don't know, half a meter of soil. And for you folks in America, that's about two feet, foot and a half, that's right, 24 inches. So they um, spread out quite shallow, about half a meter below the surface of the ground. So when it does rain, the roots are right there to capture the water um, from the soil. The roots also can sprout very quickly. They're called rain roots and they can grow new root cells very quickly after rain. And that way they can absorb lots of the water in the soil and shunt it back to the plant and store it in the stems. Now, in order for them to store lots of water in the stems, the stems are pleated and that allows the plant, the stem to expand and contract as it accumulates water after rain and it loses water for the times when there is no rain. And big saguaros can store enormous amounts of water. So some of the data I've read show that a saguaro, if it's been um, very hot and dry after a single rainstorm, can absorb up to 100 gallons of water in one storm. That's an awful lot. All right, so they've got another crafty adaptation and it's an adaptation called CAM photosynthesis. CAM photosynthesis stands for crassulation acid metabolism. Now, in the nighttime, it's cooler and more humid. And that's a really good time of the day to open your stomata. Those are the little pores in the leaves or the green parts of the plant. In the case of the saguaro, that's its stems. And they open those pores to let in carbon dioxide for use in photosynthesis. But of course, when they open the stomata, water escapes. And that's really bad news if you're in a hot, dry place and you want to preserve water. So the can photosynthesis kind of works like this. The plants open their stomata at night. And that way, much less water escapes because it's cooler and more humid. But that allows carbon dioxide in. But of course, there's no sunlight at night, so they can't photosynthesize. But they lock the carbon dioxide up into crassulation acid. And then in the daytime, they close their stomata. So they don't lose as much water when it's hot and dry and much less humid. But they've still got the carbon dioxide locked up internally. And then they release the carbon dioxide internally and use it in photosynthesis. So CAM photosynthesis, crassulation metabolism. is a really sort of smart way to survive in a very hot, dry place. All right, I think those are most of the adaptations I'll talk about with respect to the cacti. Now you can clearly see the spines on the cactus. They're modified leaves and they've got a couple of functions. One is they help defend the plant because if they've got a big store of water, then other organisms in the desert might want to get access to that water. So the plant needs to defend it with spines. But the spines also have a couple of other roles. One is they shade the plant from the sunlight. The second one is when the wind blows, they kind of create um, a, a, kind of like a, sh a wind shield. So the wind doesn't hit the plant full on, but it hits the spines and is sort of dispersed and diffused around the, the stem of the cactus, reducing its chance of being blown over. Now, of course, since they don't have leaves, they've got to photosynthesize somehow, and so they have green stems, and they undergo photosynthesis with their green stems. 
Look at this, it's a little baby, a little baby saguaro. Actually, it's not a baby at all. It's probably about 30, maybe even 40 years old. So when they're very, very little, they don't grow very quickly. Once they get much bigger, then they grow much faster. But this also illustrates uh, something I told you about with the triangle leaf burr sage. And that's the nurse plant effect. And the nurse plant in this case is a, come on, we've already seen it, or at least we will see it. It's a creosote bush, all right? So um, it's much better conditions for the plant to grow under a nurse plant.